Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreyFlorals.com and today I am participating in Christy's Beautiful Life Scrappy Tag. Now I was tagged by Mora uh, and she tagged me a little while ago. I was uh, out of town for a little bit but I am back and ready to do it so I know I'm a little bit late to filming this but I wanted to get it done because she tagged me and I wanted to participate. So if you guys don't know this is a tag created by Christy from Christy's Beautiful Life here on YouTube. Um, this was to get to know some of the uh, newer scrapbookers. Um, I've been here for a while, but I figured I'd participate for either my newer followers and because Maura tagged me. So let's get started. I have the questions here. Number one is what brought you to scrapbooking? Uh, my first scrapbook page was done back when I was in elementary school. One of my friend's mothers used to let us scrapbook with her. Um, and that was really fun. And then another one of my friend's moms had uh, Stampin' Up! demonstrator so she'd invite us to the parties and we would go and I picked it up fairly quickly and then started asking for stuff for my birthday or for Christmas um, so then I started accumulating scrapbooking things so it was a while while back when I got started um, I did take a couple breaks if you guys have been following me for a while um, I stopped in uh, high school I stopped scrapbooking I picked it back up in college um, and that leads me back up to here where I am now fresh out of college and still scrapbooking Two, uh, besides your immediate family, what do you like to scrapbook about most? Examples, vacations, nature, your obsession with coffee, etc. So vacations are definitely my number one. I love doing specific albums about a topic like a vacation or even a specific destination. Like right now I'm working on a DC album because we visited DC several times. Um, and then I'm also working on a Vermont album currently. And then I also just did a mini album, which was really fun for a specific sort of time uh, and that was uh, my fall, my 30 days of thankful album that was fun to work on. I like specific projects more than just general years of scrapbooks um, because the day-to-day -day life while it does change um, and I do like documenting it, it's not as exciting as documenting the once in a lifetime trips that I've taken which I find very very exciting. Number three, are you a buy it all or use your scrap stash type scrapbooker? So uh, a lot of people answered both on this question when I was watching their tags, but I would say I'm a more use your stash person um, as someone who didn't have the budget to be spending on scrapbooking stuff when I was in high school or in college trying to save up money. Um, I have a lot of older supplies still and I tend to still buy older supplies when they're on sale. I don't have the newest things. Um, but thanks to Tuesday morning, I'm starting to get a little bit more of the newer variety of items. I do like using older supplies, so I will say I love mixing old and new um, and combining those together. I think that's really fun and interesting and more of a challenge. So I would say I'm both, but I'm more of a use it rather than keep, you know, buying the latest and greatest. I'm not up to date on like the releases that are coming out or anything like that. It's just not my cup of tea. Number four. What do you need to be in your perfect scrap be mood? Um, it's pretty easy for me. I usually, while I'm scrapbooking, I usually watch, I catch up on my YouTube videos. I like to be doing something while I'm watching them. Um, it usually makes me feel more productive rather than just sitting and watching them. Um, so I'm either watching YouTube videos or listening to podcasts. Um, and then I like to have my water nearby because I do film all, almost all of these stuff that I make um, for you guys or for my patrons. Um, so since I'm filming so much and since I use a lot of live audio and I'm doing voiceovers, I need to have a lot of water in my system because I'm doing a lot of talking. Uh, which if you guys don't know, I work from home so I don't talk a lot in my day-to-day -day life except for this. So um, trying to get my voice prepped for that every day is a lot of water. Um, and then I don't usually snack while I'm scrapbooking. It's usually a snack before or snack after. Never snacking during, which is weird because I figured I'd be like, you know, the person who'd have M&Ms on their desk or something like that. But no, just water and my supplies out. And I do not need the perfect desk to start scrapbooking. I can scrapbook on the floor. I could scrapbook anywhere as long as I have cute supplies with me. Let's see, number five. Are you more of a literal scrapper or can a random embellishment be on your page just because it's cute? So it depends. Sometimes I can use icons and animals and stuff on the page they belong, but I also can easily justify random embellishments for random pages. Um, I think it was a couple months back, but I ended up being able to use a llama die cut on a, what I thought at least was a <laughs> photo of an alpaca or llama or something of those sorts. Um, so that was a direct correlation to that embellishment, but usually it's just something I can use. It's usually color matching or it's 
you know, some sort of theme. So if I'm doing something Disney related, uh, so if we were at the hotel, but it's for a Disney trip, even though there's nothing Disney related in the photo, I could still use some Disney related product. Or if I was scrapbooking about the new apartment we got, I could put a bird on the layout. That kind of stuff doesn't really bother me and I can find a justification for it somehow, some way I will. <laughs> Number six, how many pages do you try to scrap in a certain amount of time? Uh, example, in a month I try to do about 10 or at a crop I try to do 16. Um, I would say there's no amount. I do have an overall yearly goal, therefore that'd probably break down to a monthly goal, but I've realized that my uh, yearly goal is probably a little low. Uh, I created over 30 pages in January, uh, so that's kind of crazy. A lot of those were six by eight though, and those are a lot faster for me to make up, but I would say that I try to make at least 10 pages a month. I also do a lot of card making and other items, DIY, home decor, that sort of stuff. So that's why I calculated my goal to be projects rather than actual pages. Uh, but I have a whole video about my goals as well if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but I would say it's never an exact number. It's just I know how much I should be able to get done in a month mainly based on how many videos I need to film and how many uh, projects I'm ready to go on. So like if I'm really motivated to work on a Vermont project or my Vermont album, I would spend more time doing that than doing, you know, other things that might interest me. So it's just doing what sort of inspires me at that time and trying to gauge how much I can get done for that specific project. Number seven, favorite collection from 2018. Now, uh, when I was watching the other videos, I knew that this question would be so hard. I have no idea what came out in 2018. I have no idea if I own anything from 2018. Um, for visual aspects, I loved the, I didn't own any of this, but I loved the Auburn Lane collection. Um, I loved, I don't even know when Maggie Holmes Bloom came out. I just got that this, well, 2018, but I think that came out in 2017, so. I have no idea which one was my favorite. I love all of them. I can scrapbook with almost any color scheme, anything you can give it to me and I can make it into something. It's just, I love it all. I can't pick. It's impossible. And then number eight, what is one scrappy technique that you have never slash really tried that you wish you were good at? Um, so one thing that I haven't tried but I can now is backing cut files. Now if you guys know, I don't have a silhouette or a any of those uh, machines uh, but I did get some cut files from a friend so I could try to back them I've done it once before from a cut file I purchased um, Jelly Bean Soup made some cut files that they sold in store so like specialty papers um, and I backed that and it was so hard I don't know how many people back their cut files it's just that's just so time consuming and I didn't even back the whole thing I just backed certain spots of it um, and that was back in 2018 uh, but now that I have some more cut files, I might try that again. Um, but again, not exactly what I dreamed it would be. I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful, but it's just so difficult. So maybe that's something I'd give another try. Number nine, what color combo do you think we should see more of? Um, I'm into a lot of the jewel tones, deeper tones. I think someone else said this. I watched a lot of these tag videos, but like right now I have this in front of me. This is from a DCWV paper pad and it's got this beautiful maroon color with gold foil. Um, and I'm working with a lot of those deeper, richer colors now. And I struggle to actually find that in my stash via embellishments or uh, paint six by six paper pads or stickers. Um, the 12 by 12 papers weren't so hard because I have a lot of neutrals, but like for those jewel tones and those uh, deeper, more complex tones, I think it's very difficult to find that sort of stuff because it does seem very heavy and the uh, scrapbooking industry is more towards a lighter level, it seems, where they go through the whites and then the pastels and then the brights versus the jewel tones. So I think that would be really nice to see more of that in the upcoming collections. Number 10, and this is the last one. Are you at all worried our hobby is fading out? Any ideas to help keep it from being so? Um, so it's really funny uh, being a person who's been around the scrapbooking industry since I was very, very young, because um, I started my blog and YouTube channel back in 2009. Please don't go look at it. It's really embarrassing to go back that far. No, I haven't taken them down, but don't go back there. It's very scary. Uh, but since someone who's been here for a while, I've seen the fluctuations and what the gravitations have been towards. I remember when there used to be little websites, I think they were called um, Ning, Ning websites. Do you guys remember Ning groups? 
Um, so you'd each get a little URL and you'd go make a group on it. Similar to, it was before Facebook sort of developed out groups um, and you'd go visit that website every day or you'd visit the forums every day um, to kind of talk to your friends uh, that were doing scrapbooking. Um, I've never had anyone who's scrapbooked in real life um, that I've known who scrapbooks in real life that's around my age. Um, I have some uh, friends, parents who scrapbook, um, but it's never been like my age group that has scrapbooked. Um, I do have some friends that love to come over and like play with my scrapbooking stuff. Like they enjoy it. It's just not something they have time for right now. Um, but I also realize that there's sort of a digital scrapbook happening with uh, Instagram and Facebook and compiling all those memories together in one place is sort of the new trend for um, my age group. But I love printing photos and sometimes I'll gift photos to my friends or pages to my friends and then they're always wowed by them and they say, how do you do that? And then, you know, there's sort of that spark that happens and it's hard to keep up with. It's hard to start a new hobby. Um, it's time investment, it's money investment. It doesn't have to be that much money, but usually it's a money investment. Um, and of course, when they look at my stuff, which you guys can see behind me, I have a lot. Um, it's an overwhelming aspect to it as well. So I think that while I don't think the hobby is fading, I do think it is changing, which a lot of ladies already said in their videos as well. But I don't think that there's going to be a huge resurgence of the hobby. I don't think everyone's going to scrapbook, but I do think that the idea of scrapbooking is going to change versus uh, the uh, what the previous idea of scrapbooking was which was the stay-at-home mom who scrapbooked all the photos with the fancy scissors and stuff which um, I used to do that too so <laughs> I guess there's a lot of changes that have happened in the last 10 years um, which is absolutely crazy to think that I've been scrapbooking for 10 years that's scary uh, but I don't think it's fading out but as for trying to you know salvage uh, more people into this hobby and getting them interested I think it starts with making more content that is for uh, younger audience I find that a lot of people on YouTube scrapbook their kids which I mean inspires me nonetheless but when people see people scrapbooking kids they don't see the people who don't have children yet or who are scrapbooking their friends and stuff like that so I think the younger scrapbookers that I watch tend to do that sort of scrapbooking where it's their friends or their pets or just their family. Like I'm my family scrapbooker yet I'm the youngest one in my family. So it's just this weird aspect that's sort of changing and I think asking um, younger people to get into it is harder. Uh, because it's a lot, it's not a burden but it's a lot to take on when you're so young is to be your family storyteller. Um, I thought of that when I started. It's like I wanted to have this when I grew up for my kids to see so I could remember my childhood and how my parents were when I was younger. And I wanted to start that off as soon as I could before all the memories went away. So I think that there is a way to get other people interested and it starts with your friends. Um, I think we all know we have creatively inclined friends and I've actually given some of those friends gifts. I'll make them scrapbooking kits with like a little mini album so that way they can get started when they're ready. Um, and they don't have to worry about going out to buy stuff. I gave them all the stuff included. So if you guys have some creatively inclined friends who might want to try scrapbooking, I would highly recommend making them a mini album kit so they can try it out, get hooked, and then they'll be hooked on the hobby for the rest of their life. So that's just what I do. Um, it's not big, but it's hopefully making an impact somewhere. But that is it for the tag. I'm supposed to tag other people, but a lot of people have already been tagged and I don't want to re-tag. So I'm going to tag everyone that hasn't been tagged already. Uh, I know I've seen a lot of these, so I'm not going to call anybody out um, because we all have different schedules. And if you get to it, you get to it. And if you want to do it, we want you to do it um, because that's what Christy wanted when she created this tag. But I'll have Christy's Beautiful Life and uh, Mora link down below so you guys can check them out because uh, Christy started the tag and then Mora tagged me. But that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to know me a little bit better. And if you guys would like a better get to know me video um, about things outside of scrapbooking as well, just let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!